Hello everyone, thank you so much for clicking on the latest convective weather video forecast. Let's take a look at our weather headlines. We're going to see the potential for more severe weather today from the northern plains and into the midwest. Also, another thing we are watching is going to be the intense heat that will be building in the western United States over the coming days. Um, this pattern shift that we're going to see will result in a nice cool down for portions of the east and the southern or the southeast part of the country um, for this weekend and this will continue even as we get into next week as well. Let's look at the current alerts across the United States. We have heat advisories all here in the orange across the southern US. This is where we're going to see actual air temperatures in the upper 90s to near 100. But when you factor in that the humidity is very high, we're talking about dew points in the middle 70s, you factor in that very, very high humidity out there, a lot of moisture in the air, that heat index value goes well into the 100. So it is dangerous heat. Definitely want to be careful out there. I would not recommend doing any strenuous work. If you have to be outside, if you have to work outdoors today, um, you definitely want to take it easy, take plenty of breaks, and please stay hydrated. This is um, pretty dangerous stuff out there. Definitely, if you got plans such as, say, needing to mow the yard, I would definitely try to hold that off until later this evening when temperatures get a little bit cooler. And, of course, that direct sun isn't right there um, beaming down on you. We also have a flash flood watch here from portions of, um, this goes from Iowa right in through northern Illinois and far northwest Indiana. This is where we're going to see rounds of showers and storms. We're already seeing those showers and storms in this area this morning, and we have a warm front drape to this area. This warm front is basically paralleling the upper level wind. So what this means is that warm front is really going to be staying over the same area. The train track for these storm systems over the next 12 plus hours will be staying over that same area. So we'll see round after round after round of storms going over the same area is producing some very heavy rain. A lot of moisture in the air. Um, we're going to definitely see the potential for very heavy rain. We're talking about potential for uh, two, three, probably over three inches of rain, certainly in some areas. And we're talking about the potential for flash flooding because keep in mind the ground is already very saturated in these areas that just recently got hit with uh, the heavy storms that we saw back on Monday. The big story across the West, it's pretty quiet. We're talking about the heat. The heat is by far the big story, especially for the northwest part of the country, where we're going to see temperatures getting well into the 100s for afternoon highs. We're talking about a streak of 90s for the city of Seattle, a very long, prolonged uh, heat wave coming your way. This is a excessive heat watch here in this um, deep red collar here. That is a an excessive heat watch that will be going into effect. Um, over the coming days, we're talking about some very, very hot temperatures coming in across the West. And it's a pattern that will be quite persistent for um, for several days once it sets up. And let's look at these severe weather reports from yesterday. Uh, you'll recall that we had a lot of severe weather across the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast yesterday. Very hot and humid air mass. And these storms came in, some very powerful storms coming through. We had a total of... 317 wind reports out there yesterday, 62 hell reports, and thankfully there were zero uh, tornado reports, but a lot of damage out there from these storms during the day yesterday across some um, portions of Pennsylvania, the stretch right into parts of uh, New York and um, Rhode Island, New Jersey, all those areas getting in on some pretty nasty storms yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening. And um, speaking of storms, um, here's a look at the severe weather threat for today. Um, we're going to see the potential for uh, severe flash flooding. I already mentioned the flooding threat with those storms today along that warm front. We're going to see the potential for some damaging winds, large hail. Tornadoes will also be a possibility. So we're going to see additional storms developing across portions of Iowa this afternoon as the atmosphere becomes more unstable. And um, we're definitely going to be watching that potential for more severe weather in these areas later on this afternoon. And speaking of storms, I did want to mention that our very own Justin Flickinger was out on Monday. Um, get, he, um, he got some great pictures to us of the storms moving through um, Michigan. Um, here you can you can go to our website, Convective Weather, uh, convectivewx.com slash gallery. You can check out all these great pictures that um, Justin Flickinger um, um, posted on here to the website, some really incredible footage of the damage from these st severe storms to push through the Midwest on Monday. Uh, you can see here across portions of Michigan. And you can also s look at other pictures from prior storm chases, um, all posted on our gallery on our website. So definitely be sure to check it out. Some really great pictures here of the devastation that we saw. And we actually, 
across um, Coal City, Illinois. Um, it was we had um, the N National Weather Service um, went out um, yesterday to survey all the damage. Obviously, we saw extensive damage across these areas. And in Coal City, Illinois, that was a confirmed EF3 tornado. And in fact, I'm told that this is the strongest tornado in the Chicago metro area since the Plainfield tornado in 1990. So we're talking about a um, pretty um, incredible, uh, pretty remarkable uh, event um, on Monday. That's where the event we saw on Monday. Tornadoes ripping through portions of Iowa and Illinois and Michigan. So Monday was a very active day. And unfortunately, some of these same areas getting in on that severe weather threat again today. Let's time out the storms today on the high resolution um, rapid refresh model. Um, this is a model I do show you a lot on here. Um, as we go throughout the day today, we're, as we head into um, this afternoon, we're watching this round of storms, a lot of lightning with these storms this morning already, um, moving through Quincy, Illinois, heading down towards Springfield. Um, pretty wet commute for those areas. And as storms are trying to head out even towards Indiana as well this afternoon. Now here's the map by 1 o'clock um, Central Time. You can see we have the complex that was there this morning across portions of Iowa has now shifted and kind of weakened across portions of Illinois. And we're seeing some new storms starting to develop across portions of northwest Iowa. And as we go through about uh, 2, here's 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, you can see additional storms. What I really want you to notice is the storm, that these storms that develop train and the track, they track over the same areas over and over and over again. This warm front is paralleling the upper level wind flow. So what this means is this basically the warm front is the train track um, for all these um, storm complexes to continue to track on through. So we're going to see several rounds going over these same areas and that's why the flash flooding threat is very real and very concerning um, for today and into tonight. You can see the HRR model showing that storm, the storms pushing into northern Illinois. This would be by, let's see, 23Z would be 6 o'clock central time looking at some pretty good storms. Uh, according to this model across portions of northern Illinois. And as we head later on this evening, we see more storms firing up. Even as we get towards midnight and after midnight, more storms continuing to fire up. And so your weather potential will be real all night long. So you definitely want to keep your weather radio on and make sure you are aware of this severe weather potential, not just for today, but certainly heading into tonight and tomorrow. This severe weather threat will just keep on going here. And looking, going back to the slides here, I wanted to show you the uh, flood threat that we're going to see with these storms. Now, as this warm front, I already mentioned how it's paralleling the upper-level winds. The storms will be training over the same areas. We're talking about potential for several inches of rain in some areas. And keep in mind, these areas have already seen a lot of rain, so it's not going to take as much to cause a lot of problems when it comes to flooding. So definitely be mindful of this if you're going to be out and about for rapidly changing conditions, uh, rapid water rises with some very heavy rainfall in these storms. Do not drive over a flooded roadway, period. Absolutely do not drive over a flooded roadway. I want to show you the NAM computer model. Um, let's time out the storms. The HRRR model only goes through 5th, um, through hour 15, so I couldn't show you what will be evolving later on tonight and into today on Thursday. Now, going back to the NAM computer model, the 12 kilometer um, NAM here going into later today and tonight. You can see it depicting those storms this afternoon, this evening across um, this area through here, across the northern plains, stretching into mid the Midwest. And going into tonight, you can see the storms beginning to develop a, a storm complex here, the, according to this model, across portions of Illinois and um, portions of Wisconsin and Iowa. And you can see this complex short, sort of uh, shifts eastward heading into early Thursday, stretching into portions of Illinois and Indiana and Michigan. Could see some very strong, could see damaging winds with these storms. Again, that will be when many people are sleeping, so it's, that's why it's very important to keep your weather radios handy. Make sure you are aware of the severe weather threat. And heading into Thursday, we're going to see the severe weather potential setting up across the portions of the Ohio Valley. Going back to our slide here, you can see the slight risk stretching across portions of the Rockies here, the lee of the Rockies here, um, portions of the high plains, and you can see we have a marginal threat here in the dark green, stretching all the way through to mid to the mid-Atlantic region, and it's pretty large area under a slight risk across portions of the um, of central Missouri. This goes through the Ohio Valley as well for today on Thursday. The main threats will be for some large hail, some damaging winds possible with these storms as well. And going back to the NAM computer model, 
uh, seeing how things evolve throughout tomorrow afternoon. We're going to see that really I, I am kind of concerned with what I see for tomorrow afternoon across portions of the Ohio Valley. You get to some pretty good storms. We're going to see a very warm or hot and humid air mass. In fact, I think across portions of the southern Ohio Valley, the lower Ohio Valley, you go down towards portions of uh, far southern Indiana, especially Kentucky, um, those areas. I think those areas could be looking at low to mid-90s for highs tomorrow. We're talking about some very high humidity. Um, heat index values getting well to 100s potentially. Could be the hottest day of the year so far for you guys. Um, and so it's going to be an atmosphere very favorable for some good storms to develop as we get that destabilization and daytime heating and heading into tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening again we have all that sunshine if we see a lot of sunshine in these areas and then these storms beginning to approach later tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening wind damage uh, will be very concerning with these storms and I can't run on an isolated tornado as well across these areas later tomorrow afternoon tomorrow evening and you can see as we get into Thursday night we're still looking at storms moving through uh, these areas so this is where the threat doesn't end during the day we still have to watch this, these rounds of storms throughout the night along this front. And heading into Friday, this, um, the storms begin to shift a little farther southward. You can still see portions of the Ohio Valley getting in on some showers and storms. But the main severe weather threat on Friday will be shifting farther southward um, as um, the front shifts southward. We're going to see the Tennessee Valley getting in on more of that severe weather potential heading into the day on Friday. Let's look back at the severe weather potential for Friday. And you can see we have portions of... Uh, portions of central and eastern Oklahoma through northern Arkansas, far southern Missouri, and western portions of Tennessee, um, all under that severe weather potential on Friday. So far, they have a slight risk in place for those areas. So definitely want to be aware of that across portions of the Mid-South um, and the Southern Plains um, during the day on Friday. Now, as we head into the weekend, we're going to see a pattern change. I already mentioned earlier in this uh, video about the pattern change that we're going to see uh, providing a big cool down across the east. Remember today we have heat advisories across portions of the south where temperatures are going to be near 100. Heat index values well into the 100, so very dangerous heat. This is a look at the, um, the upper level pattern here, the 500 millibar chart. You can see we have a ridge, really a pretty much a ridge across the portions of the southern part of the country here. Very hot temperatures in place. But look what begins to happen as we get into the next several days. This is the map by Sunday. What a change um, to the 500 millibar map here. You can see we have a huge ridge across the west. I mean, this is a very strong ridge in place. You guys are going to be seeing some very intense heat. And look at, look at the eastern half of the country. This is a very deep drop. We get that big ridge. Remember, I a few um, videos ago, I mentioned how the jet stream is like a waterbed. That where it goes up in one area, it goes way down in another area. And that's certainly what we're going to see here. Look at Sunday, this trough going digging all the way down to the far southern part of the country. Parts of the southeast were last week you guys were under a ridge. You guys um or and you guys are still under the ridge, of course, but you guys have been experiencing some very hot temperatures over the past week, week and a half or so. You guys will be seeing a much um bit or a much needed cool down for you guys um, heading into the weekend and as we head into next week it looks like this pattern will really be staying rather persistent so uh, a big cool down for the eastern part of the country but unfortunately the western part of the country will be baking and it looks like this heat is going to stay in place for quite some time in fact I'm going to show you the temperature anomalies for the next several days this is the map by Sunday you can see clearly, huh, clearly above normal temperatures across the west. We're talking about temperatures well above, more than 20 degrees above average across these areas. We're talking about portions of Idaho and um, Oregon and, and Washington getting well into 100s. In fact, I think the forecast for Boise, Idaho is for like 108 degrees by Sunday, 108 on Monday, around those 105 to 110 range through about the middle of next week. I mean, that is some brutal, brutal heat. Hey, at least the dry heat, right? But still, that is hot stuff. You can't deny that at all. And looking at the temperature anomalies across the central and eastern part of the country, quite the contrast. We have much cooler temperatures in place. We're going to see temperatures actually below average. Any areas in the blue, that represents where your temperature is going to be cooler than average. And going into next week, I'm going to show you the temperature anomalies. This is for Sunday. I'm going to show you the temperature anomalies for Thursday. Not much change. We go through the next several days, 
um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're still baking across the western United States. You can see the pattern's not quite as anomalous as it will be this weekend, but we're still talking about some pretty, um, very hot stuff across the Pacific Northwest. The Northwest not getting any relief from the heat through next week, um, but some um, continuing to see the nice relief across the south. You can see all these areas in the blue representing some cooler than normal temperatures. That's about all I have for this video forecast. Thank you for watching.